What did the year 88 mean to you? I mean, 88, man, was the year to get it straight, yo. It was the year of God, yo. Pop, sin, nation. Peace. Lyrics. You couldn't even have lyrics. Like how you got bombed in the nation, you get bombed with whack-ass lyrics, you know? Mm -hmm. Real, 88 was the year to get it straight. If you ain't have it right, you was a problem, yo. Mm -hmm. You was in the way. You wasn't in the, you wasn't in the, in the vibe of the, what was going on. You was in the motherfucking way. Mm -hmm. For real deal. Yeah. What did hip-hop mean to you then? Hip-hop mean four facets. You didn't have to rhyme. You might DJ. You didn't have to DJ, you might break dance. You didn't have to break dance, you might dig graffiti. Mm -hmm. Anything you did in hip-hop was an art. Hip-hop wasn't about just rhyming or beats. It was about a conglomerate of everything with the culture. That's what 88 hip-hop brought. Like, do you feel that year like set the president for the hip-hop to come mm -hmm. for today? Hell yeah, that was a blueprint. It's like anybody that comes out now, like for me to say, I the 70s hip hop was the 70s, the 80s hip hop, the 90s was the best shit fucking ever. Mm -hmm. I could say that if I invented rap. If I was mm -hmm. the first nigga to rhyme, then I could say, get on my dick. <laughs> if you wasn't the nigga that invented it, you can never be on your dick enough not to take homage and bow down the ones that did it before you. It's true, true, straight it's a fact. It's a true story. Mm -hmm. That's why anybody in here, anybody can tell you from Rockham, Biz, Big Daddy Kane, anybody, our forefathers, four sisters, Salt and Pepper, mm -hmm. when they see me or the first time they see me, they see me like this. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck how many records I sold. What I done, I learned off of them. My style was a bit of all of them. LL Cool J, Kumo D, Karis, One, Chuck D, Phyllis Four, Crash, Clue, Cold Crush, Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, Sugar Hill Gang. My style came from all these styles. So what did EPMD mean to you? Right? EPMD was that motherfucking Fisher hat type motherfucking <laughs> slow flow. Things like how they how EPMD they were so small, but they shit like they was East Coast MCs. But they had a gang of tracks that West Coast niggas could rock to. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, they, wow. they, 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 they bought the Strong Island. They ain't even know. They ain't, ain't nobody know. Like they was like, yo, EPMD was so hardcore underground. But what really made them stand out? Yo, they had shit for the East Coast, West Coast, everywhere. When they came, it was like just the tracks alone and what they, they, they delivery, they flow. You know, mm -hmm. Eric Sermon. He was talking with a slur. You couldn't even tell. Because the lyrics and the beats were so hard and they, and they meant it. It wasn't like, I shot the sheriff. You like, burr, burr, burr. you like, hold on, hold on, what? It's scratching. Yo, it went from DJs and anything. Everything added to hip hop. It wasn't just a, an MC did it, a DJ did it. It was all. Facets and everything that was stood. So last question, yeah. Chad. How do you com compare hip hop nowadays no. compared to back in '88, around that era? Nowadays, now, yeah, '88. Nowadays, compared to then. Oh man, I just say, man, it was more of a hunger for the '88 because they never knew they could get that type of radio play, and it's like everything was on a, a more or less like. You gotta do it to the death. It wasn't like you gotta do it till you get a deal. You know what I mean? And it's like a lot of things add up where it synced into to be the same. Cause like in '88, it was like you had to be independent to get into the game. And now, 2013, you gotta be independent to get into the game. Mm -hmm. So it all adds up to your grind. You know, last mm -hmm. everything else that goes the fuck on. If your grind is there, you won't cut through the bullshit. Then you won't get it. Okay. It takes a grind. A lot of people think like, yo, if I'm dope, so I'm gonna make it. Or I'm gonna be out there. Nah. It's your grind, your hustle, how hard you take it and how hard you go for it. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody hustle is stronger than yours, they gonna get in the door before you. So, mm -hmm. right? so, so they like, like nobody owe you nothing. It's what you get out of it. You right. gotta take it. Right. So, like, what's a quality or a character trait that you would see from an artist in 88 that you wish an artist of today had? I would just think, like, I wish they could go to 88 and see how it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Then it has we say it how it is now. now. Balls are eight, if we say it now, then now I was thinking going gimmick. back and see it. Like I think like it'll be one thing that's different. Oh, it was a whole lot more conceptual rhymes. It wasn't just everybody talking about the same shit. Yeah, right, same right. topic. Like, you could have a record about motherfucking picking boogers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you could have another record about motherfucking go see the doctor. <laughs> like, right. you fucking, everything was conceptual, visual. I like you. <laughs> the records, like, you could see them records, like, and they was talking about everyday shit. Everybody wasn't. Now you had the floss rap. Don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. Everything came for something.